I believe that the best banana bread in the world is the one you grew up eating. I know for me, no matter how much my tastes have changed or how much I've learned about baking, I've never even tried to beat my mom's banana bread simply because I think it's the best and no pastry chef in the world can beat it. But today, I'm gonna try. Let's jump right into my mom's recipe, going through everything. We have our flour, sugar, eggs, oil, vanilla, baking powder, baking soda, milk, and bananas. All of the measurements for this recipe is in the description below. And we're gonna start all of these the same way, mixing our sugar and oil together. And then in this bowl, we're going to whisk together all of our wet ingredients. So that means bananas, milk, eggs, and vanilla. And you really can't over mix this at this point, but it's important to mix it thoroughly because once we add the dry ingredients, we're not going to want to over mix. So in a separate bowl, let's go ahead and put together our flour, our baking soda and baking powder and just whisk those together quickly so they're dispersed evenly. And then we're going to put that into our wet ingredients and just mix to combine. And then we're going to put all of that into a grease loaf pan. I'm going to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite kitchen utensils, the silicone spatula. Without it, I could not get the bowl this clean. Anyway, this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 55 to 60 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is. And out comes a beautiful loaf of banana bread. And while this recipe certainly has some flaws, like why is there no salt in this recipe? It's super easy, it's what I grew up on, and it's delicious. So thank you mom for finding this recipe wherever you found it. Upgrade take one. So you're gonna see many of the same ingredients here with a handful of substitutions. Those being white sugar to dark brown sugar, oil to brown butter, milk to sour cream, the addition of salt, and a little extra vanilla extract. I'm not really going to walk you through these steps because it's the exact same process. Wet ingredients, dry ingredients, you get it. The thought process behind all this was that I really love brown butter. I think it's the most delicious smell in the whole world. And I really like my cookies with brown butter and brown sugar, so let's try it out with banana bread. And it was simply that easy. I didn't change the measurements, I didn't really change much other than I thought it would be a nice addition. And then I saw online that a lot of people like to put sour cream in their banana bread because they think it adds a moistness element and adds a little bit more fat, which helps keep everything tasty and, you know, more fat, more flavor. As you can tell, the brown butter and brown sugar really made this batter and subsequently the loaf quite a bit darker than the previous one. But the moral of the story for this whole video is you're still going to get banana bread. And looky there, a perfectly golden, delicious banana bread. Plop it out onto your wire rack the same way you did the previous one, and now you have two banana breads. I'm gonna cut into both these guys so you can see what the inside looks like, and just like the outside looks a bit darker, so does the inside. We're gonna call our official test test taste tester over our girlfriend, because although she weighs 100 pounds less than me, she has a sweeter tooth. And as expected, my mom's banana bread is delicious, and I didn't quite beat it. And I'm still convinced no one's ever going to beat my mom's banana bread recipe, but if anyone's going to, I'd really like it to be me. So let's try one more time. All right, take two, let's talk about what didn't work in take one. So as much as I love brown butter and brown sugar in my cookies, I don't think they worked in my banana bread. So we're going half white, half brown sugar, and just some room temperature butter. Butter over oil, I think it's got better flavor. Uh, but unless you're using a KitchenAid, you're never gonna get this to incorporate correctly. So you really need to use melted butter rather than room temperature. So let's do a little camera magic and now it's melted. Anyway, now that that's all melted, we're gonna move on mixing up this batter the same way that we have the last two times. Only other change we made to this recipe is that we omitted baking powder and we only have baking soda. After a little bit of research, it just kinda of seemed like overkill. So you might be noticing that at the end of the day, all of these recipes side by side really don't look that different from one another, but then again, what two recipes of banana bread really do? And that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to encourage you to maybe play around with your recipe, change the amount of oil, change the amount of flour, make substitutions here and there and have a little bit of fun with it. And at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you're probably gonna still end up with something pretty tasty and pretty reminiscent of banana bread. There we are, another golden delicious banana bread. Let's take a second to talk about chocolate chips and nuts. It's not the way I grew up eating banana bread and I never really developed a 
taste for it. But if you wanna add some, maybe add half a cup or so right before you put it into the loaf pan. In the meantime, I'm eating this banana bread with my official taste tester and we really seem to like it. So what started out as a quest to beat my mom's banana bread recipe really just turned into an exercise in showing you how to make adjustments to recipes. Whether you're trying to one-up a recipe or just make substitutions based on what you have at home, I hope this is a little bit of an insight into what making substitutions will do and makes it a little less daunting. and that's banana bread. Thanks so much for watching. Don't be afraid to make substitutions and remember that the only way you're going to get better at baking is by baking.